Hello, uh, my name is Peter Adrian Stofberg. I'm a cello teacher. I'm going to be speaking about online teaching. Uh, I asked some of my colleagues their likes and their dislikes, things they wish they knew earlier, um, what they considered a meaningful online lesson, how they had to adjust their teaching methods to be effective online, how they developed as teachers and how their students progressed. Now I teach at several schools so I have contact with a lot of teachers and their response was so amazing. I have so much information to share I have to break up this lecture in two parts. So the first part we'll talk about the first three points likes and dislikes, things we knew, things we wish we knew earlier and what we consider a meaningful online lesson. The second lecture will be how we had to change our teaching methods, how we developed as teachers and our students' progress. So let's start. Very interestingly, I asked what, would, what was your likes and your dislikes and everyone answered first with their dislikes. So obviously people really hated teaching online. So let's start with that. Um, Right. Online teaching definitely saved us from going bankrupt and a lot of our worries where a lot of my friends lost their jobs and had to make other arrangements. Music teachers, we were able to continue. So we were very, very lucky. And I realized when the lockdown started that it's not going to only be for three weeks. So. I started preparing myself emotionally to teach until the end of the year online and that was really terrifying because I was worried how many students would I lose, how many parents would think oh this is a waste of time, my child's not making progress, let's just stop lessons altogether. That's quite nerve-wracking and I lost a lot of students um, because of those reasons. Mostly because people weren't able to afford lessons anymore. So that, that was very unfortunate. But some of them have started again now that the economy is running. So that's wonderful. I'm very happy with that. Let's start with the dislikes. Of course, the number one complaint is poor internet connection. Internet connection followed by terrible sound quality. Now, unfortunately, there's nothing that I can do to help you with that. Um, there's some remedies like investing in fast fiber line but it's not available any, everywhere to get a fancy camera and a good microphone but if the student's internet is not good it's not going to make a difference unfortunately. Then there's the number two there's the visual aspect of teaching. Um, where's the camera going to be placed? Um, we can't see the whole picture. Uh, things that we might miss include how the person is sitting, is their posture good? Because you can't really tell if I'm slouching or if I'm sitting up straight. It's really difficult to tell on camera, especially if you're only seeing the top half. You can't see if the, what the chair that the student is sitting on. Is it high enough? Is it too low? Is it a couch? Is it a bed? All sorts of things came out. Um, in the online lessons. Instrument size, I have st three students who just now bought new instruments because they grew so so much. You can't see where their feet are, is it under the chair, is it where it's supposed to be, their arm position, is it high enough, is it low enough. All of those things have an impact on the visual part of our teaching. So with the bad sound quality, of course, there's because the sound is so horrible, you can't work on nuancing, you can't work on sound production or tone quality, all of that went to waste. Um, also unwanted background noise, dogs barking, someone's mowing the lawn, siblings coming in and out of the room, mom shouting at si said siblings for coming in and out of the room. So that was something that, that bothered me, I think. One of my colleagues also mentioned that it was quite challenging to help students with rhythmical accuracy. 
and intonation. So when you're in the room with your student, it's very easy to correct it quickly. You're right there. Uh, so for some students, progress was a bit slower when it comes to that types of things. And then also something that that same person mentioned is men mental state. A lot of the kids and students and ourselves, we were isolated from our friends and our family and grandparents, our parents. So it's, it's quite taxing and you don't know how, how long it's going to last. So for a lot of our students, we were the only people that they were seeing, seeing every week because their classmates, yeah, I guess you can see your friends online, but to have a connection with an adult who's teaching you something, the, I'm just thinking of my niece, they had Zoom meetings with the teacher once a week, but it's not as personal as we have the privilege of having with our students. Something that one of my colleagues said, and I'm quoting, when I could see that the student is upset or in a bad mindset, I usually deal with it in the room in a more sensitive way. But I didn't, it didn't feel appropriate to deal with it online, so I ended up ignoring it or pushing it aside. I feel like that is a whole can of worms that I don't want to open right now because it's it's something that's very close to something that I experienced as well. And she's absolutely right. It's very difficult to have a super personal, still professional relationship with your student because you don't know who's in the room with that person. It's just not as intimate. Then another complaint was that tuning takes longer. That's sure. That's for sure. In the first week of lockdown, I had four students snapping strings and I couldn't order strings. So three of them snapped A strings and one of them snapped a G string. So I had to rearrange their pieces to not have those strings or give them new positions or explain new positions to them to avoid those strings. So that was great for my older kids. But for the younger ones, it's very challenging because they need, they're still learning how to change strings and it's, it's very important to have all the strings on the instrument. And sometimes with tuning as well, the, the pegs are too tight and they're not strong enough yet to turn it and then the parent comes in to turn it and they're very strong and they don't know how, how far and how tight to turn it so they snap the string. It was, it was very challenging. Some students were overwhelmed by large amounts of work, schoolwork. Uh, I think a lot of the schools prepared for worst case scenario of kids not coming back. So they would send out a lot of work and especially my high school kids complained to me that they've got a lot of schoolwork, even though they don't have sport. I guess that's what the teachers were thinking too. Oh, they don't have sport. They can, they can work. Luckily, most of my students used music as an escape or a little bit of procrastination. So my students progressed so amazingly. It's, it's fantastic. Then something to also keep in mind in some homes, fam in some families, they had to share the devices. Not everyone had a cell phone, not everyone had laptops. So that, that had to be shared and managed. Internet speeds that weren't great. So if someone's watching Netflix or if someone's on another video call, same time as you're supposed to be teaching, the connection is poor and it keeps disconnecting and reconnecting. It's, it's very, very frustrating and you lose momentum. Then teaching is quite, online teaching is quite taxing. Meaning that you're talking a lot, you can't demonstrate, so your voice might get tired. You're constantly leaning forward because you have to see what the student is doing because they're sitting too far away. So your neck, your body is getting sore. Initially, when I started, I was seeing five students in the morning having lunch and then five students in the afternoon. And I was exhausted at the end of the day. Really, I would, 
I would be so tired at the end of it. And it's actually, it's called Zoom fatigue. It's a thing. I Googled it because it was really taking its toll. And over time, I we all improved our stamina with online teaching. And towards the end, I was seeing eight or nine students in a row having lunch and then continuing. So I guess we all just build up stamina. Okay, so to end off the dislikes, just with some quick comments. Um, online lessons are frustrating because I can't correct the problem immediately. ESCOM made R, timetables very difficult to manage, voice getting tired. Physical interaction with beginners are essential, especially for hand positions and bow holds and bow movement manipulation. Uh, not always the same quality of internet. Sometimes it was so bad that the, uh, everyone, me, myself included, we had to either reschedule the student or have them send a video of the work that they prepared. Then you watch it, make a new video explaining what needs to change and give the new work. It was quite, quite taxing. Then someone said not being able to help with intonation. So some people like to sing along or to play along or to accompany. Uh, someone said struggling to maintain momentum in a lesson because of poor internet connection. There's no fiber in my area, so I had to work with expensive cell phone data. No, that must have added up. My admin worked in my admin work increased a lot because I had to move lessons around constantly because of load shedding, the staggered return of schools, and Wi-Fi failure. That I can agree with. That was really, really horrible. Let's move on to the likes. So, here we go. You get the full 30-minute lesson, which is great. The student doesn't need to unpack. You don't need to fetch the child from class. They always have their music books. It's, it's very, very good in that sense. All the kids had to learn how to tune their instruments, even the little ones. I know we said earlier that it's, it takes longer and it's difficult, but it's a very important skill that everyone has to have. Then I, have, I only had one colleague who told me that it was easy for her to adjust to online teaching and she found that her students progressed very quickly and even quicker than in her in-person lessons. Now I must agree with you with her. I had a student who really struggled with concentration and keeping his attention. And I think Younger people, including myself, we're very easy. It's very easy for us to get addicted to the to screens. So it was just so amazing to see how his concentration improved and how much he improved. He excelled. I absolutely had him hooked for the entire thirty-minute lesson. He was hanging on my lips. It was it was so great. He was absorbing everything. And he caught, he caught up to all of his peers, and I'm so glad that he's now able to play duets with them that are on the same level, and he's playing the more difficult part now. It's, I, I really, it was, it was very, very nice for me to see that. Someone said that uh, we were able to monitor their progress, keep them motivated, keep contact, and help contribute and establish a routine. That's very important, especially with younger children. Then children's confidence increased because there was less spoon feeding we couldn't follow along in the music with our finger we couldn't sing along to them they had to follow the music along in, on the on their own distance learning so far distances so i had a student who was in the karua you would not believe how good the internet connection is over there a colleague of mine, Maria Schumann, had a student in Zambia. She also told me that the internet connection there was very good. Um, we all saved money on traveling costs and the time spent traveling, which is great for me because I teach at so many different places and I have to drive to a different school every day. So that really helped me with saving money. And you have more time to arrange for lessons, so you're more flexible. Also, you can't spread the virus, so that's good. 
it was also very nice to see the parents in person. So they would pop in at the beginning of the lesson, say hi, maybe help with tuning. And then because you're working with a screen and your, your view is limited, it was quite nice because suddenly the student is framed, so to say. So you can see specific things and you, you focus on specific things in the lesson. So I have a student who started with violin and then moved over to the cello. So her grip looked like this. Not so good. We want more something like this. So I told her, look at the screen. You can see, see what I see. And it just clicked and she rolled her wrist over and it was fixed it's it's that was that was amazing to me how, how easy that was if you can make the student how the students became aware and more involved in the learning process i i thought that was really cool so i think that some positives did come out of the online teaching I do not advocate for full-time online teaching and only on-time learning. Um, I think it grows thin after a while. But there are definitely some things of the online teaching that I would use in my own teaching in person. So question two was, in hindsight, what do you wish you knew sooner? All right. So the first one was, to know what the best setup would be to sit in. What must the room look like? Someone said they would have liked to prepare their students better for the lockdown, teach them how to tune, um, give them more music, have them order more music books, have them order new strings or more strings, place more emphasis on counting out loud. Someone also said knowing how long we would be in lockdown for, how long we would be working online. That might have prompted them to buy a microphone and a better camera sooner. In hindsight, knowing about Zoom fatigue and how to handle that, some tips that I, I read up on is, if possible, to have a window where you can see nature, some trees or grass or flowers, Take small breaks, remember to eat, turn off the camera that serves as a mirror so you can't see yourself all the time. I don't quite agree with that. I think it's very good that you can see yourself because then you can see what the student is seeing. Sit comfortably, take care when positioning the camera, have a bottle of water on standby and fresh air. Uh, try to move around, remember to rest your eyes. At, after the first week of lockdown, I made a video of how I would want my parents to prepare their students and that really helped. Someone, something else is the music exams. We were all very stressed about that. Is it going to be in person? Is it going to be online? Because with online, someone mentioned that they feel they can get the student to, to 70 or 80 percent of what the left of what the piece should sound like. But that last 20, 30 percent that you really need to be in person with. Um, and that's, that, that was really important. I have a, I teach at a school called the WIP primary school, and they organized for a UNISA examiner to come to the school unofficially and to conduct exams for them. And that was, that I thought that was a very good, very good idea because the students now have something to work towards and it's, it's unofficial, but the school gives them a certificate and it's an accomplishment. The child has accomplished something and that is very, very good to have a goal. All right, the third and the last note for this lecture session. What would you consider a, a meaningful online lesson? A healthy teaching philosophy would be to impart knowledge that truly makes a difference to the student's outlook or ability and the same applies with online lessons. That is a quote from Peter Martens who responded to my questions. So our students were socially isolated 
from the from the world during this lockdown and for many of them we were the only people that they saw and we served as a constant in their lives and that was a privilege i would say in my pgce in my pgce year at uct the most meaningful philosophy i encountered was that it's my responsibility or our responsibility to create an environment where anyone can succeed and for me that meant that my lessons had to be friendly welcoming and service and escape from their worries and anxiety things that might help to make the lesson meaningful is the setting it has to be quiet the lighting has to be good i don't if the light comes from behind you only see the shadow of the student a music stand would be helpful i had a lot of pillows and extra chairs and siblings holding music at the beginning yeah that was it was quite distracting to the student also having the parents present or nearby was also very helpful and i think as long as the student learns something it would be considered meaningful so in the second video i will be discussing the last three points which are which changes or what changes did you have to make to your teaching to be effective online how we developed as teachers and lastly our students progress thank you very much